Welcome back guys. Today's video is for those of you who are looking for retirement in Hua Hin, Thailand. If you haven't considered it before, it's a really lovely area in Thailand to retire to. There's a great big expat community that lives there as retirees and the town offers everything you could possibly want in retirement. I've been visiting Hua Hin for about 17 years now, a long, long time. And I've been living in Thailand for over 12 years. So it's somewhere I'm looking to retire to in the future, guys. It's voted by Forbes magazine as one of the best places to retire in Asia. It's definitely changed over the last 17 years since I've been going there, guys. Uh, you know, it's a lot different now than it was back then. I think it was a lot more sleepy kind of fishing town then. And, you know, it's a bit more buzzling now. There's a bit more going on there than there used to be for sure. And there's a hell of a lot more retirees and just the tourist town. There's a lot more people living there now than there used to be. It's expanding a lot. But there's a reason why the king lived there for a long time. It's a lovely place to live in Thailand. Let's first take a look at some of the beaches in Hua Hin. There's the main kind of stretch of beach. There's no kind of promenade, so you have to go down onto it. It's about four, four or five kilometers long, the main stretch of beach. And it, it is lovely at certain times of year. There's obviously different tides. So sometimes the tides ride in or out at different times of year. And definitely, you know, it's better at certain times of year. The water's clearer. Uh, you know, in the rainy season, the water's a lot more washed up like it is all over Thailand. So uh, that's something to think about. The clearness of the water, you know, certain times of year, it's lovely for swimming. Other times, maybe not, you know, not so much. It's obviously not as clear water as down in Phuket or, you know, some of the southern areas around there. But the beach is really, really nice area to check out. It's great for running along, walking along in the morning or the evening guys and if you get a bit fed up with the main beach there's lots of other beaches around the area south of Hua Hin basically just lovely beaches this cow Tibiak like Monkey Mountain Beach which is really really nice and then you can just go on and on and there's all the different beaches one called Army Beach and then another one a bit further along called Sainoi and that's absolutely beautiful a lovely spot to go and chill there, nice little bay there, as you can see now on the video. A really good Instagram spot. A lot of people go there to take photos. It's bloody lovely. But even if you go down that coast a lot further, it's absolutely wonderful, guys. Just lovely coastline all the way down. So if you get a little bit bored of the town, you can go south of there. There's lots of lovely places to visit south of Hua Hing. Another really important thing to consider when you're living as a retiree in Hua Hin is the cost of living. So let's talk about, you know, the different costs in the town itself. So, you know, it is a tourist town, so there are inflated prices at certain areas. There's some great supermarkets in the town, like Villa Market, which is very much a Western supermarket. It's actually two, I think, or maybe three, but it's definitely two Villa Markets, which is a Western supermarket. But I suggest that, you know, when you come to Hoi Hin, you do your shopping, you know, you get all your vegetables, fruits, meat from, you know, the markets. They're a hell of a lot cheaper. So you can save yourself a lot of money by doing this, guys. That's a really good idea. And then, you know, go to Villa Market and places like this or Macro for things that, you know, special stuff maybe you miss from the West, like Tamarind Market or the Night Market or Sisada market and other markets around the town where you can get Western food at market prices, yeah? So there's like these stalls, you know, for example, at Tamarind Market where they sell burgers and pizzas and, you know, different types of food. There are hot dogs and, you know, quite some Western food there. So that's a good kind of cheap way of getting some Western food, guys. Another important thing is the cost of accommodation. I think most of foreigners coming to thailand you know first of all you're going to rent a condo apartment or house each to their own which they prefer obviously the apartments and condos are cheaper than the houses most of the time so what would you pay well it totally depends where you want to live in Hua Hin. there's different areas so if you live in the main kind of hub 
you know, along that beach, you know, where the beach road is, you know, where Villa Market, Market Village along that road, then, and it's beachfront, then the condo's gonna cost, yeah, a lot of money probably, you know, if you're overlooking the ocean. Okay, it's probably gonna be 20, 30,000 baht per month. But, you know, if you just go a little bit back from the beach, you know, a couple of kilometers and get a condo back there, or, you know, if you go further along a little bit towards Cow Tibiac Beach, and come back just from the beach a little bit. Obviously you can get cheaper things there. So you could get condos there for like 10 or 15,000 baht per month. Now, obviously you can find cheaper than that if you want, but obviously the, you know, the standard's gonna go down and down. If you just want a box room with a fan and no air con, then yeah, you could probably get something for six, 7,000, probably even cheaper in some areas if you're way back from the beach. All over Thailand, it's like this. There's always something for every budget, so you can get something very, very cheap if you want to. Now, if you're gonna get a townhouse, uh, just kind of a bog standard two, three bedroom townhouse, small townhouse, then, you know, as long as it's way back from the beach, you know, a few kilometers, then yeah, you could get it for probably 20,000, maybe 15, 20, 25,000. Depends immensely on, you know, what the property's like. Is it in a little estate with security and a swimming pool? They vary immensely. Uh, obviously, these are not going to be beachfront. Beach, anything beachfront in Thailand is, you know, it normally is very, very expensive. So you have to pay like a premium to be beachfront, like you would expect, guys. But it's always a good alternative to, you know, live further back from the beach and then you can stretch the budget a lot further, guys. Is Hua Hin a cheap place to live in Thailand? Now, you can look at this two ways. It's a tourist town, so obviously it's not the cheapest, but like in every tourist town, if you just go back out of the main area, then you can get usual Thai prices. This is why they kind of suggest, you know, you get a condo that's a little bit further back from the beach, you know, just a little bit out, but still kind of motorbike rideable away. Uh, so this would be a good way to go. And then, you know, it can be very, very cheap. And if you do, like I say, go to the market, get the foods, don't always go to tourist areas for food and different things, but you can do that as a treat. And it's nice having that ability or, you know, once a week, twice a week, however much you can afford. So sometimes treat yourself to Western food. So it's a good thing if you're living in Hua Hin, it's there for you. Now, could you get tempted to have Western food every day? for every meal, of course you could, and you could spend a lot more money. And I think some people do if, if the budget can stretch that far. But there's always that kind of option you can have both in Hua Hin, guys. Uh, obviously, you know, every tourist area in Thailand, there's always inflated prices around the like little tourist hub. As long as you go outside of that area, you're gonna get better deals, better prices for things, guys. Another important thing for expats is like safety now who are here in and thailand in general is ridiculously very safe place to live there's lots of other expats retirees living in who are for many many years so you know if there was any problems there you'd hear about it on the news or people just wouldn't go there and as i said at the start of the video you know it's voted by forbes is one of the best places to retire to in Asia. One thing you might just have to be aware of is, you know, people do drive differently over here. I'll say no more, uh, if you know what I mean, in Thailand in general. Uh, so that's one thing you just have to be a little bit careful. And the sidewalks are a little bit, they're not the same as in the West. There's not always proper footpaths. And if there is, there's quite often food carts down these footpaths. So it can be tricky to walk around sometimes at certain times of day, guys. See infrastructure like, around Hua Hin and you know, you can get taxis everywhere, Bolt and Grab taxis, which is like an Uber taxi. You can get, you know, a Song Tao, which is like a BART bus, a green BART bus. You can get around, the, which runs along the main from north to south Hua Hin. So you can jump on that, it's very, very cheap. Press the buzzer to get off. So yeah, a good way to get around the town. Uh, there's tuk-tuks, a little bit pricey sometimes, good for tourists. There's motorbike taxis you can get around, but I kind of advise you, depending on whether you feel comfortable or not, you know, getting a car or a motorbike when you come and live over here. I mean, I kind of been driving car and a motorbike for many, many years in Thailand and it's absolutely fine. And I'm not a young spring chicken either. Uh, so yeah, that's something you have to just think about yourself, how you want to do it. 
Now there are van services back to Bangkok. So that's always something you can get back to Bangkok for a couple of hundred baht into like, you know, Ekimai, which is central Bangkok station from Hoi Hin. So that's good. And the bus station's pretty central located. There's also a big bus service you can use as well. Sombat Tour, I think, yeah, goes back to Bangkok as well. Near Market Village, that one. So another important thing is healthcare. And, you know, what are the hospitals like in Hoi Hin? And there's three like main hospitals. You've got uh, Bangkok International Hospital, which I'll show on the screen now. You've got Hoi Hin Hospital and San Paolo Hospital. So they're kind of three of the main hospitals. You also have lots of little clinics around the pharmacies around to get different pharmaceutical drugs, paracetamol, ibuprofen, all these kind of things, or mosquito repellent, or, you know, all these kind of things. But, you know, you have three main hospitals. And that Bangkok International is a, a very, very reputable hospital in Thailand. So, yeah, just make sure you've got adequate health care cover before you come to Hoa Hin, guys. So you can use these great hospitals. Because the chances are, you know, if you're over 50, you're going to be retired. The chances are, unfortunately, you know, sometime you're going to probably have to go to hospital. That's just inevitable if you're going to retire here. So it's, you know, really imperative to get some decent health insurance. Health insurance in Thailand varies immensely. I mean... For myself, I can get a decent policy for about 3,000 baht per month. Now, I'm coming up to 50 soon. Now, if you're over, you know, 60, 70, then obviously it's going to probably cost you more money because they're worried about you, you know, getting sick. And maybe if you've got pre-existing conditions as well, this could be a problem. So, you know, it could cost four or 5,000 baht per month and more if, you know, you're... 75 and got pre-existing conditions this could be an issue and it's something you should look at before you consider coming to Hoi Hin. Big question would be you know how much does it cost to retire you know how much would you need per month to live in Hoi Hin. Now this is like kind of very individual to each person I mean I think personally you know I could live there as a single person for about 40,000 baht per month. Now, would that be a good life? It'd be okay. You'd have to stay in a condo away from the beach quite a lot. You'd have to get a really cheapo condo. You know, it'd give you a little bit of money, but you would be struggling a little bit, I think. So I think a better budget would be anywhere between 50 and 60,000 baht per month. That would be as a single guy in Hua Hin guys. Now if you're coming as a couple, I don't think you need to double it, but I think definitely you know you'd want something between about 70 to 80 thousand and then I think that would be okay. You could live quite comfortably and have quite a nice life out in Thailand on that as a couple. Obviously you know the sky's the limit. Can you live on less than 40 thousand? You know some guys are really on a budget. Uh, for sure yeah you could live on 30 thousand for sure but your standard of living is going to go down obviously i have lived on when i first came to bangkok which is very very similar kind of price i lived in i lived on twenty four thousand bar when i first moved to bangkok and i lived on that for about six months so you, you can live on a little bit of money you know in hua hin or generally in thailand everywhere but you just your quality of life goes out down a lot and you kind of have to eat thai food all the time which uh some people don't want to do guys they want to mix up and have different types of food nightlife in Hoi Hin well for me personally I don't really enjoy the nightlife anymore it's not really for me personally you know a lot of these bars and stuff I don't really drink so for me personally I couldn't care less but I know some of you guys may be interested there are some good areas for bars and drinking and I don't know other things if you want that kind of thing uh, in Hoi Hin but you know generally it's a uh, it, they're quite low key, you know, all the bars quite low key. At certain times of year, it does get quite vibrant and, you know, very, very busy during like January, December, January, you know, the very, very high season. So it gets very, very busy around the bars and in the town as well, it gets very, very busy. That's something just to be aware of. And, you know, it is a tourist town. 
So there's a hell of a lot of traffic sometime, sometime of year and at weekends because it's a very popular destination to come to from Bangkok for Bangkokians. Like when I used to live in Bangkok a lot, we always came down to Wai Hin for the weekend. So, and Pattaya as well, them two places are very, very popular from Hua Hin, uh, from Bangkok, guys. There's also some very exceptional golf in Hua Hin, Black Mountain Golf Course. Just check it out here on the camera. It's a very, very beautiful golf course. Very, very nice. One of the best ones in Asia, I think. It's right up there. It's a lovely course. So, that's something to check out. And there's other golf courses around Hua Hin as well. So if you're into the golf, then Hua Hin is right up your street, I think. This video is just to help you out if you're thinking about coming out to retire in Hua Hin. It's a great place. I've been visiting there for many, many years. It's definitely changed over the years, guys, but I still highly recommend it. I think it's a great place to go. Uh, is it gonna keep changing? Probably, that's life. Everywhere keeps changing. So yeah, at the moment, I still rate it as a very, very good retirement destination guys okay i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it helps you out if you're thinking about coming to retire in hua hin and until next time we'll see you next time